notes from my April slash May 2024 reading of Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey. I am Tannis Coralie Leonardi, she, her, hers of Seattle, and I'm filming this Wednesday, 1 May 2024. I started the book Saturday, 27 April 2024, and finished the book today, Wednesday, 1 May 2024. I had 293 pages, including through the About the Author section. And this is, I'm going to go through book and reading notes for this April slash May 2024 reading of, it's an autobiography by slash about actor Matthew McConaughey. It's a Green Lights by Matthew McConaughey, 2020 Crown Publishing, first edition, hardcover. Put the ISBN in the video description. Uh, this is a copy I got from the local library system, King County Library System, Washington State, United States of America, Plant Earth, the original. And so there we go. It's the introduction. Book notes. This includes includes construction and design. So he includes a picture of himself on the front, the title, his name. There's other people's perspectives on the book on the back cover, a little bit about the book on the inside front cover, and then a little bit about the author. So Matthew McConaughey on the inside of the back cover. There's some color photography on the inside front and back cover the text is a combination of black and green there's bold there's italics there's kind of mantras and stuff he's come up with and written over the years um sprinkled throughout the book it's not a chapters pro approach for a book it's a parts approach um and then there's a kind of within that like sections that have uh, Two circled Venn diagram for kind of denoting the start of a different section with the green in between because he's emphasizing green lights and like just going forward with stuff. And there's also some phot photographs or maybe images throughout as well. So there. Oh, it's a different design. I would. I have not yet rated it on the King County Library System. I would actually give it a probably a four out of five stars just because I'm I it was not my favorite formatting. Uh, I I do like it's, it was a good one for to read for I've been reading a number of bi biographies and autobiographies and I would say it's a good one to read for diversity of style at this point in time. However, it was not necessarily. Uh, it's, I would say, I think I liked it towards the beginning better, but I think some of the stuff I was like, format, if it had been formatted a little bit different, I might have given it a different rating, but four out of five, and the, the minus one, if we wanted to think of five out of five is the same as this, um, for the book notes, like the, the including construction and design, that, that facet of it, not necessarily the content, which is next, reading notes, um, so it kind of provides, so it provides background about the author, Matthew McConaughey. It's an autobiography, so he wrote it about himself. And he points out that he kind of always kept diaries and always wrote letters to himself and other people. And so writing is something he's kind of, he kind of always did. So some of the writing in the book is stuff he wrote, you know, 30, 35 years ago, 40 years ago kind of thing. So it's a, uh, which I think people might be like, that's being lazy if you're just taking your writing from the past and putting it in the book. And it's like, well, you can think of it as if he really wrote as much as he pushed in this book, that's a that's a blessing and a curse at the same time, right? Um, it's, uh, uh, how to put it, if one really wrote like five page letters to oneself every day, then he has, and he goes back through everything and making the book, then he has a, it's it's not late, it might be someone, might, they might say, but it's being lazy. But what, how is it being lazy? And he might not be doing original writing for the book if he's already written it all, though there is instead a very active selection process as to what he has already written to include in the book. So it's a, I wouldn't go so far as to say it's lazy when somebody already has a bunch of writing and then they put it in the book, right? Because they have to choose from all that writing what to put in the book. So there's a, okay, the books get constructed in different ways. So it just might be a little bit of a different construction procedure than what somebody reading might have wanted, right? Um, so I thought that was an interesting one. Is like it puts emphasis on the choosing what to include, all right, and um, when including writing that he's already done from the past. So I, I, that was just something that was, yeah. 
Um, we live in an instant gratification world and they want fresh off the press, you know, that kind of stuff. And this is not necessarily that book, right? <laughs> um, um, but it is fresh off the press in terms of the final product. Um, so there's that. Uh, he goes, throughout the book, he does not, he, in the beginning, he kind of introduces, um, he doesn't spell living with a G. And then he's, and, and stay tuned for that. And so on page 114, if you missed it, uh, he does actually s say why. Um, he, he's so in quote, and there's no G, and there's no G on the end of living, living because life's a verb end quote. Uh, so it, it's a way of saying because he's not actually like in the proper conjugation of live kind of like in the verb sense. Um, if you're actively living, it's the proper conjugation is ing in the English language. Right? It's an English word. So then he's emphasizing, I took this to mean as it's there's no G because he's not living it, right? He's living it. It's already in the past tense. Um, so he's not actually living when he's going to write stuff down. Right. Um, or he was just like, screw, screw, screw linguistics. <laughs> um, I don't want to be proper. I don't know, kind of thing. Um, so there was that. If you missed that, that was page 144 in the text next to a picture, the last picture of his dad taken. Um, August 2, 1992, before his dad died making love to his mom. So there you go. Um, at least for this book. And then his book. Let's see. Another note I had or flagged was... Uh, he passed judgment on... Uh, oh, no, that was the, the different... The, this one was... And he wanted to catch... I was... I, this is because of my recent spectating experience. Um, so I'm filming this uh, Wednesday, 1 May 2024, and I went to the Pac-12 Conference Swimming Championships this year, back in March. Um, and he, he was going to... He was in a trailer park, and he was going to get to watch a football game, the last Pac-12 college football game. And I was like, actually... So this was, you know, back in the, what, 1990s. I was like, fast forward 25 years, and the, the last Pac-12 conference championships game is about to occur. Because I think the Pac-12 conference formally is no longer a conference on August 2, 2024. 2 August 2024. Yeah, anniversary is his dad dying? No. But he, if he's self-absorbed, he might interpret it that way. Um, so there we go. And so Marta was just like, just a reminder that he wasn't talking about the last ever Pac-12 conference co uh, game that was just the last for the season, if he, were pay he was paying attention. Kind of thing. And then the third thing I decided to tag, oh, was he passes judgment on a woman needing to have a respectable job. And this was in reference, he was saying, contrasting it with, like, being a prostitute. Um, he was saying, just get a respectable job. And I was like, oh, maybe Matthew McConaughey is the lead of the male bull market in the world we live in these days of, like, a woman has to be rich to be marriage material. Maybe I found the source of this. Maybe it's him. A woman has to have a respectable job. And then what qualifies as a respectable job? So, like, clearly not me, because I'm not rich and I make $30 every other week. Um, clean house and I'm a runner, a road runner. I have my one mile road run time, four minutes and 29.55 seconds. And, but I'm, I'm, I'm not a professional athlete. So then what might he think of someone like Sarah Stjostrom? Yeah, like she's a professional athlete, but maybe not. But then that would be concerning if that were true, because in the back of the book, it says he owns a major league soccer like team and so it's like that would be concerning if he doesn't view professional athletes as ha being like having a respectable job um Sarah Sostrom is my friend not Matthew McConaughey's okay. um <laughs> even though he brings up someone with the name Swardstrom but I had to I had to bring up Sarah Sostrom somewhere and I thought the respectable job was a per perfect fit it's like Sostrom is not Swardstrom okay um yeah 
And so, and he's and he goes on to talk about his personal life, which I thought was actually kind of interesting. So he kind of had a flurry of movies about 2000 to 2005 or so. And he was born and he says he's 50 and this book was published 2020. So he's born, what, 19, let's say 1970 per his phrasing for the book. Um, so, and then he meets his wife, Camilla, after the flurry of like 2005 or about that time or something like that. So then... He's about, which is, I'm, I'm going to bring up, it's about 35 years of age when he meets her for the first time. Has not set eyes on her before that moment. Uh, online, like virtual, or in person, nor in person. Um, so, it's like, there you go. Um, yeah, and then they get, they have three kids and then get married. Yeah, not married and then three kids, three kids and then married. There, there we are and yes is there anything else uh, yeah so I thought the reason so I, I've seen a number of Matthew McConaughey movies and I thought something to bring up was my grandpa Roger was in the United States of American Navy and he really liked Clive Costler books like Numa Files because you know it was kind of based on carrying on uh, the legacy of uh, naval culture, the United States Navy culture. And so he had a bunch of Clive Cluster books, and when he died, I got some of them. So this is one came out in 1992, publishing um, this book, Sahara. And uh, I think, was it after the book came out, he has two wet dreams about, you know, Africans in the Amazon rainforest, is how he chooses to interpret it. And he actually uses it as a means of invoking the story of Sahara in his own life okay and you're like why would you do that he uses it to then get the role lead pit lead role Dirk Pitt um in the movie Sahara and I thought this was one worth bringing up because one I have the a 1992 publishing of the book right <laughs> um which if this came out before how, me how did I get it back to my my grandma Connie after my grandpa Roger died and it was um so, yeah, it was a, he uses his real life experience to get roles, if that makes sense. So, essentially, if he's like, I know who they're going to cast for, or this has got to be made into a movie, right? He reads the book, he goes, this has got to be made into a movie, so I'm going to go to Mali and float on the Niger River, because that's, like, literally perfect fit for this book. All right, um, so he goes, how do I do it? Uh, how do I put myself above the rest of the actors if we're all perfect personality and other people maybe have better action acting, like they're bigger in the action genre or action adventure genre? How can I beat them? So he goes to Africa to kind of bring it up in his life. And whether he brings it up in the audition or not, he has that real life experience that he can build on in the interview that he goes, not only am I better at acting from in part because of that real life experience, but because he's actually like a fit for it because he's been there. So it's very much about framing of things and kind of taking situations w that would have been what he terms a yellow light or a red light and reframing them as a green light. So um, that's kind of how his life worked as, as portrayed here. So I thought that was an example where I'm like, and he's, he does it without actually saying, I read the book, but he, also saying he read the book, like he literally describes one of the scenes as big dirt, pit like with like periods and capitalizations like dirt pit character is dirk pit right like so if you know the book you should know he's invoking it in his real life the interesting thing about that situation is he didn't actually use his real name when he went to africa so it's kind of like it's kind of cowardly um, I'm, I'm as you guys know about this about me in this channel is i'm very much about the truth and he's very much about hiding but information, which is definitely a fad we're in and trend we're in these days, and maybe that's also a Matthew McConaughey fad slash trend. Um, but I'm more a truth person. I don't go by an alias or a fake name. And he did in Africa. And so it was kind of like, well, he used that to get the role. Did did the people he auditioned with actually know it? Or did he go, I'm just going to bring that up after I get the role? In a kind of shady, um, hidden information, which he calls outlaw logic. And I was like... It's still called, at the end of the day, that particular shade is called being deceitful. Um, so there we go. Yeah. So in conclusion, was it? I thought 
But content-wise, it like very much matches how he comes across in his movies and stuff like that. So it was a good read. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the the formatting was a little not my favorite, as I said. Um, but yeah, I gave it four out of five stars.